Hello and welcome to Pivot Table Text Values Alternative. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. All right, I've exported some data from some accounting or CRM or ERP system, and I want to, to create a report from this data. In this illustration, I'm using client, I'm using the type of tax return that we're preparing, and I'm using the staff person who is assigned. And if you're not preparing tax returns, just substitute this for whatever type of data you happen to be working with. But what I want at the end of the day is one row for each unique client, one column for each return, and then in the resulting like matrix, I want to see who is assigned. So we might think about using a pivot table. So let's start with insert pivot table. And we'll set it here and we'll click OK. And we want to see one unique row for each client. So client belongs in the rows layout area. So far, so good. We want to see one column for each return type. So we put return into columns. So far, so good. And in this resulting matrix, we want to see the staff who's assigned. So we insert staff into values and, hmm, that's interesting. We see like a bunch of ones instead of the text. So like, what's going on? Well, upon further investigation, we see that the pivot table is displaying the count of the staff. So there's one staff assigned to each client return. And that's not exactly what we want. So let's see if, if there are any other options. Let's go ahead and go to value field settings. And hmm, there's a bunch of other aggregate functions we could use, including min or max. So let's try min and let's click OK. And ah, it's a bunch of zeros. So what does this tell us? Basically what it tells us is that the values layout area isn't really compatible with text values, right? It's expecting numbers. Now there is a way to use um, text in a pivot table if we use the data model and a DAX measure uh, that uses the concatenate x function. But if we didn't want to bother with writing measures or formulas or using DAX functions, there is an easy alternative that just requires a couple of clicks. And that alternative is Power Query. So let's see if we can get the report that we want using Power Query. We select this, we go to data, from sheet or from table range. Now what we do is we select the column that we would ordinarily put into the columns layout area. It's the one that we want to see uh, used to create one column for each unique value, right? So in this case, it's return. Then we click transform and then we click pivot column. In the resulting pivot column dialog, we pick the values column. So this would be the analog to which field are we putting into the values layout area. In this case, it's staff and we click OK. And just like before, we get a bunch of ones. And just like before, it is trying to do a count. But instead of giving up, let's go back and inspect that dialog a little more closely. Let's go back here and let's look at advanced options. Okay, when I expand advanced options and I look at my choices, I see some other choices. I see minimum and maximum. I also see don't aggregate, but let's just start with minimum. And this is the same thing that we just did in the pivot table. And in the pivot table, we got a bunch of zeros. Let's see how Power Query handles this. We click OK and <laughs> yes, it worked. Okay, so what is this telling us? It's telling us that the developers who built the min and max functions for Power Query use different like logic than the developers who use the min and max functions in pivot tables. In other words, text values are supported. And when there are multiple values, it's gonna pick the min or the first one in the list if you had sorted that list. Max would have returned the last one in a sorted list. So if there were multiple values, it would have returned the first or last, depending on if we picked min or max, okay? We're gonna come back to the don't aggregate option here in a moment, but for now, let's just finish this out. I'm gonna go ahead and close and load into a table, into an existing worksheet, and this is fine, and let's go ahead and go. All right, and now we got it, okay? And life is good. And let's assign someone to DIG290 corporate. So I go DIG290, I go corporate, and then I go ABC, okay? I don't need to go through all the Power Query stuff again. All I need to do is right click and refresh, and that staff person shows up exactly where I expect it. And so life is good and we can move on with our life. But I do wanna talk about don't aggregate and I wanna talk about multiple values. 
Okay, so let's start by adding a multiple value. Actually, let's start by going to don't aggregate. Let's go back into Power Query. And let's go into this gear icon. And let's change this to don't aggregate. And then let's click OK. Everything looks good. Let's close and load. And everything looks good. OK. But now let's see what happens if we have multiple values, or in other words, multiple staff assigned to the same client return. OK. Let's go here. And let's go DIG290, corporate. And let's also assign XYZ. So we would hope that it would show ABC and XYZ in this corporate area. So when we right click and refresh, what we get is empty. And if we look here, we see that there is an error. So let's go back in here and see what happened. Okay. When we select don't aggregate, okay, like we did here, okay, then if there are multiple values, we get an error. And if we select this cell, we can see exactly what's going on. There's just too many elements. Hey, Jeff, there's like too many things. I don't know what to do. So like error. And then when we send that back to Excel, um, we see empty. So depending on what we're working on, we may just want to change this to min or max so that we get the first or the last item. So again, it depends on what kind of report we're building and, and what our goal is. But let's go back here and set this to min or max and click OK and then close and refresh. And now what we're going to see in corporate is the minimum value, which should be ABC, which it is. Okay. And if we'd selected max, we would have gotten XYZ. So depending on what you're working on, this could be sufficient. But if we want all of these to show here, then we're going to need to go back and, and do a little edit in Power Query. So let's go back into Power Query. And what we don't want is to do this pivot column step yet. So let's just remove that. What we do want to do is aggregate all these and to keep all this stuff on one row. So the way that we do that is we group by client and return. So we select both the client return columns. We go to transform and we do group by. Then in the resulting dialog, we can give this a new column uh, name. I'm going to call this staff list. And then I'm going to say I want all rows. And then I click OK. What we have now is a unique you know, combination of client and return. So one row for each unique combination of client and return with a staff list that includes a table, which includes all of the related staff. So in the first few, there's only one you know, record for each. But in this last one, it shows uh, both staff or both records. Now we're going to create a new column that just contains the staff values. We don't want all this other stuff. We just, just want the staff values. The way that we do that is to go to Add Column, Custom Column, and we can give it any name we want. I'm going to call this staff. And we're going to use the table.column function. And its first argument is a table. What's our table? Our table is this staff list, right? This staff list column. So we're going to go with staff list. And which is the column from that table that has the values we want? It is staff. And we click OK. Now we see this list. And we have basically one value for each of them, except for the last one, which includes both. Now we need to convert that into a col comma separated list. The way that we do that is to use this button and select Extract Values. And now we can pick our delimiter. Do we want them to be separated with a comma? Uh, colon, any custom, comma, space, whatever you want, pick whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple and choose comma and click OK. Now I see this list that I want. I'm going to remove staff list. And now I'm back to being able to do the pivot. So I just go to transform, pivot column. I want to use staff. And here again, I can choose min, max, don't aggregate because there's only one value, so it doesn't much matter. Um, and then I click OK. We get these values, and then I can send this back into um, Excel with a close and load to. And now we got it. Okay, cool. All right, excellent. Hey, thanks for joining me. Hopefully, this helps. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and be sure to turn on notifications so you won't miss our new Excel videos. If you'd like to receive free weekly Excel tips delivered to your inbox, please sign up for the Excel University blog. If you'd like to learn more about our structured on-demand Excel training programs, please check out the Excel University website. 
All skill levels are welcome. This video is a production of Excel University. 